All right. Let's get this shit going. Go so, down. Go sit. Well, five, four, three, two. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Scott Graves. Oh, hold on a second. I forgot my title. What would I, you let one week go by and I'm like rusty? <laughs> right, right. Is that? Stupid Thanksgiving. Stupid, stupid holiday. Stupid uh, what holiday. Would I before. Uh, okay, I got it. All right, you want me to recount down? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. Five, four, three, two. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Scott M. Graves, founder of SM Graves Associates and M. The Media Project. Hi, and I'm Scott J. Graves, um, local uh, city council, local city councilor, and um, local business owner. And you are listening to another episode of Scott's on the Rocks Politica. Happy Thanksgiving, Scott. Oh, Scott's on an adventure tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Scott J. Graves, because he has taken in a rescue dog. <laughs> yeah, and it's a puppy, and it's crazy. And it's eating yeah, no, his house I, while, we, while we record the podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It's, you can't hurt this place. Yeah, so, tonight, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to give the topic and then, uh, and then yeah, go let ahead. you go out. So tonight's uh, topic is uh, the importance of checks and balances. We've seen many examples of that. Uh, in our national political theater. And tonight we're really gonna focus on local politics, um, especially since in, in, in the age of COVID, there's, um, there's, there's an increased sort of disconnect between those of us that are just the common citizens of our, our great city of Gardner uh, and, um, and what's happening at City Hall. And it's exacerbated by the fact that we can't go there or we can go there under limited circumstances, or people are making sure that they don't go there because they don't leave the house unless they absolutely have to. So, but we have an important thing tonight to talk about um, related to checks and balances. And I'm gonna sort of uh, give the stage over to Scott J. Graves to kind of set the, set the uh, stage, if you will, uh, for the specific topic we're talking about. Yeah, it, it occurred to me, um, and I had sent you an email just about something offhandedly that, uh, in the city of Gardner, um, we, we've only had five city clerks and our present city clerk, Alan Agnelli, is retiring. And it's That's kind of been under- From 1923 to now, we've had uh, only five city clerks, three years shy of a century. That's right. As a matter of fact, I owe them this decency. The first one was Benjamin Holden. He held it from- January 1st, 1923 to January 6th, 1941. Then we mm -hmm. had Sarah Bourgeois, nice French lady. January 16th, 1941 to January 5th, 1959. Then Junior uh, Pococha, January 5th, 1959 to January 3rd, 1983. Then Kathleen Lesneski, who she's, she's held it longer than anybody else. She was January 3rd, 1983 to June 30th, 2009. And then Alan came on, Alan Agnelli, uh, July 21st, 2009. So yeah, that's it. Uh, since 1923, we've only had five um, city clerks. So in Gardner, um, I, without getting too deep into it, we have, we have what's called a bicameral government. So we only have two houses, if you will, we have, or two branches. We have the executive branch um, and we have the legislative branch. Now the executive branch is the mayor, and all the departments under the mayor is, um, is the executive branch. The legislative branch is the city council and we only have a few departments under our domain and the city clerk is one of them. And because the city, because the city council is responsible for money, in other words, we approve the budget, we spend money, if anybody wants money uh, that's not included in their budget, money orders or um, expenditures from free cash, if anybody wants to take money out of the stabilization fund, and if there's any appropriation needed, it has to come through the city council. It's a complete legislative function. Because we're the money people, we spend the taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. um, we're supposed to be watching out for the taxpayers' money. That means that um, the money departments are under us, and that would be the treasurer collector, um, 
the auditor. city auditor and so th th those are the those are the money ones those are under us that means that we elect the treasurer um tax collector we elect the auditor and we elect the city clerk so now when so the city clerk and um this is what i wanted to say about the city clerk the city clerk i've always called alan our firewall he's the firewall between the executive department and the legislative department and that's because the city clerk is not just the city clerk for the city he or she is the city clerk i mean the clerk for the city council so it's the city council clerk and it's a very important position because everything that comes through the city hall on a daily basis that has anything to do with the city council goes through the clerk's office if anybody wants to send somebody a letter to the city council wants to send any city council or the city council letter goes to the clerk the clerk is like our gatekeeper and also he's he's our only presence at city hall we so don't, does we that don't, also we, mean that it, it works in the reverse in other words for city for our city council particularly since what you're about to say is it doesn't have a presence at city hall and we'll get to that in a moment why and when that happened the the city clerk is really your only way mo, uh, means for finding out what is actually happening at city hall since um since the city council doesn't have a physical presence there other than when it's in chambers for meetings that's correct it it it, it that's correct and i could add on to that by saying you know a few a few city councilors can go over there from from time to time whether they're retired or they have a kind of job where it's flexible and they can just go go hang out over there for a little while but it's not what i would call a presence like for, for instance ron cormier or jim walsh might walk over and say hi to alan agnelli and walk around and stuff but you're not going to find stuff out the way you're going to find stuff out if you're at city hall full time all the time like the city clerk is so when people so city hall operates almost i would say 99 percent under the mayor's domain so when things happen no nobody's thinking oh i gotta i gotta tell the city council about this we're just cut out of everything unless it specifically has to do with the city council or somebody needs something from us like money we don't find out about anything so the city clerk will say so when i was council president i'd get emails all the time or texts from alan saying hey i, I want to give you a heads up this is going on or guess what the mayor said today or guess what um the personnel department is working on or like out the council president and you know and generally some of the city councils will find out about things only through the city clerk because the city clerk works for the city council the mm. city clerk doesn't work for the mayor so the new city clerk coming in and i just sent a letter out uh to the council president and a couple other people just outlining exactly what because somebody put together this lame um job description for the city clerk and i didn't vote for it so we had to approve it it was 10 to 1 which usually what if you see a 10 to 1 vote i'm usually the number one um it was just lame it it, it was it, i won't even go into it but anyways i i know but, what but the city clerk that better it was lame because it was missing key pieces of information or it was too much um uh, sometimes uh, some of these bureaucratic positions the job descriptions are really cut and pasted from some mass municipal association description or something in other words it wasn't really germane to the city or what what was exactly wrong with it? i think it's important for yeah. people to understand this yeah did you ever see dead poet society oh, of course yeah and robin williams gets in front of i just came into my mind because i don't like that stuff you can't job descriptions i don't even know if we need one for the city clerk it's i mean i could have wrote it because it's not who cares what your degree is in they said it has to be a business degree why like I would be a great clerk. I never had a business course in my freaking life. I've only That's run a business for 30 that years. they want somebody with a business degree. I thought that it it needed to be somebody with a legal a strong strong legal skills because they because every action they take as clerk uh has some kind of a legal ramification. Oh. In other words, they would have to not only understand Robert's rules because they oversee city council uh meetings for instance, but they need to understand the municipal charter. They need to understand uh, updates to uh, municipal law in general when they occur and ordinances. They need to understand when the state puts out, it, it's not just laws themselves, right? And statutes, but aren't there different levels of advisories, advisory statements and 
amendments to things uh, that are still classified as important to, to the legal structure and therefore the state's regularly putting that stuff out and sending them to every city and town, right? I'm Absolutely. I'm describing this wrong because I-, I No, I you're not. Work. No, no, it's, it's complicated. And Alan Agnelli was unbelievable. He was excellent at, at the, grasping the law. He, now, he, knew, he had a legal background, did he not? I don't think he does. Um, okay. But I he don't think he, I know he doesn't have a law degree, and I don't think he has a legal background. He's just obviously intelligent, and he's he's very cautious, which you have to be as a clerk. And he and he and he, he's um, diligent. It, he, he he wouldn't he wouldn't. Uh, well, I, I talk. I'm talking about him in the past. He's not gone yet. But he would he if he had an issue in front of him, he would figure it out until he knew it. And then he'd check it out either with, you know, a lawyer or, um, you know, whatnot. So he was very cautious and diligent and uh, complete, comprehensive. But you hit it right on the head. It's more important for somebody to have a law background or a legal background than it is to have some business certificate from somewhere. But so going back to Robert Williams, he, he, he introduces himself to the class. I, I'm probably getting it wrong, but this is the gist of it. He introduces himself to the class and he has his book, How to Read Poetry. And, he's, oh, and sure. he and he start, and he starts reading it and he's like and he threw it away or threw it in the rubbish or something. He goes, "That's not. There's no rules to no, reading." What he poetry. did was he has everybody in the class. He says, "Now we've read that. Now I want you to take the book and I want you to rip out this chapter and throw it oh, away." Okay. And he has That's them all come to the front of the class and they throw it away. They throw it away. And later in the movie, of course, this bites him in the butt with with the powers that be at the school because then they find out that in fact he has done that. Yeah. When they go to read from the book, and they're going to start in the intro introduction of the book, and nobody has it in their book, you know. And yeah, it's all the exactly. To, so, to, so, to the leaders. so that's like um, that's sort of how it, it is with these things. That, and I don't know who came up with it or why, but and it, I mean, it wasn't horrible, but I guess you got to put something down. But there's a lot of intangibles that can't go into a job description. You have, have to have tenacity. You have to have courage to stand up to the mayor. You have to be, you have to stand up between that, the mayor's office and the city council. And you have to maintain that fine line there because you are the city clerk, which means you're working for the whole city, but you're the city council's clerk, our only lieutenant, if you will, at the city hall, our only presence at the city hall. And it's so important. The job, the city, the city clerk's job is so encompassing. Um, and it's so it's so encompassing and it's so busy in terms of doing city council work that he does have two full time um, assistant clerks, but he's he's chasing his tail around all the time doing stuff for the city council because he runs it's one person taking care of the whole city council and that's eleven people. So that department head is 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 just critical for the city council and for the city. And that city clerk does a lot of stuff. You know, they do all the election work. I mean, he's 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 um, he's the leader of the board of register, uh, the registrar of voters. He does all kinds of stuff, and and uh, it, if you get the wrong person, it could end up being a disaster in a lot of ways, especially for the city council. This so city knowing, council could just disappear completely. Knowing what you just said, that that makes me start to question things myself as a citizen. So, the the process, the process that we're going to go through. Um, all business processes, uh, as they relate to everything, including HR, are, are uh, a little more complicated because of COVID. What should be, the, what is the process then? This, the process for selecting this new, this replacement for city clerk, um, what therefore is happening for this process? It, it doesn't sound like it's exactly an open process. No, right. So what happens is there's, there's, no, there's no process prescribed for it um but, so there, this, but obviously five times before this there was some kind of process was it entirely different every time or was it was it uh pretty much done the same way and is it I, transparent i i don't know i don't i don't know how it was done before um alan because that was before me because lesneski was there for, from uh 83 i just got out of high school but um right. for alan i don't remember how it went to be honest with you but, so I just wrote that letter out to the president. It, it's basically her call. It's the council president 
President Kaczynski's call as to how she wants to, how the city council is going to approach this. So she, she, she'll do it anyway, anyway she sees fit. I'm sure she'll ask some people and I'm sure she's asking Agnelli. She has her advisors and she'll come up with a procedure. But the, the final analysis, obviously, I mean, the final, the ultimate election is the city council, the city council. So the city council gets, so we have 11 of us, whoever gets six votes becomes the next city clerk. So um, you can set up whatever procedure you want, but every city councilor can do his or her own thing um, to, to determine who would be the best candidate. So 